Hey, what's up, NBA fan? What's up, all sports fans? This is JB right here, host of Behind the Bench podcast network and channel. Just want to give a shout out to the rest of the crew, Shad, Kelvin, and Jermaine. And for everyone tuning in, I hope that you support Behind the Bench and subscribe to the channel and help make the show the best that it can possibly be. Now check it out, check it out. The NBA offseason is about to kick in the full gear. Free agency period starts this weekend, July 1st, which is right around the corner. A couple of days away, the clock is ticking. And... <laughs> There's a lot of players that would be free agents. A lot of players who would be free agents. But the question is, are there any superstars available in free agency? Prime superstars at that. And the answer is no. Now you have solid players, great role players. You have players who are known to be superstars or who have reputation to be superstars, but now they are on the other side of 30. They are on the back end of their prime. It's a funny thing that has happened. The timeline of the NBA has shifted where four years ago during the offseason in 2019, Leading into the 2020 season, the NBA had the largest free agent pool of all time in league history, where you had a plethora, a wealth, a bevy of prime superstars that were available. And that's when teams that were on the come up, as they say, they were on the rise and wanted to take that next step. That's when a lot of those teams should have, that's when they should have struck. That's when they should have tried to cash in. See, there's a time and place for everything. But if you look at the scene now, if you look at the landscape now, well, according to recent reports, there's only five teams in the NBA right now who have legitimate cap space to pursue multiple free agents. And I believe the Houston Rockets have the largest cap space available with over $60 million worth of salary that they can offer a contract for a pending free agent when this thing kicks off uh, a couple of days from now. So what is the landscape telling you? Now, don't get me wrong. You have many options available to improve your team, drafting, free agency, and making key trades. But free agency, what I'm taking out of was shaping up the B in terms of how to build a team for this decade, where free agency is going to be not just the secondary means, but like (laughs) <laughs> it's going to be like um, your final means to improve your team. You know what I mean? Like over these past 10 years or so, the process was reversed to where free agency was viewed as the primary means, then trades, then drafting. Well, now it's returning back to the way it's supposed to be, drafting, making a key trade acquisition, and then free agency. You see how that works? And the key to it is this whole decade is going to be about assets, a la draft picks. And with this new CBA that's about to hit, and and I'm a stickler for this CBA because it's been a long time coming. Now, the CBA is making 
it an emphasis to truly build your team in a logical fashion where the process cannot be circumvented by way of going the shortcut route to pursue all time win now scenario where essentially you have to mortgage future weight to try to achieve that short term goal. Now this new CBA is telling teams you can't cut the corners no more. You can't skim the milk. You got to return back to basics and that's through the draft. Right. And with all this young talent out here, whether it's G League or college or international based. Well. The. The most surefire way, the quickest way to improve your team, short term and long term, is through the draft. Not free agency. Now, the free agents that will be available uh, this offseason, yes, they can fill a void. They can fill a void. You know, that's what free agency has a, has its purpose. Don't get me wrong. But it's not the end all be all. And it will not be the end all be all this decade. Because when you see the players that are available, like I said, you know, you look at, you know, the players in this picture right here, you know, uh, James Harden is like 34 years old. He'll be 34 years old. Kyrie is like 31 ish. He'll be 31. It's sometime this coming season. Draymond Green, he's in his 30s. He's closer to 35 than, than 30. You know, um, Chris Middleton, I would still view him as being in his prime. But when I think of a Chris Middleton, I think of a player who's been associated with a team in, 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 in the Milwaukee Bucks and playing alongside a superstar in Giannis for so long that that he's going to fit that system more so than any other team that he could potentially uh, uh, sign with this offseason. You know what I'm saying? But as far as that – prized asset or, 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 you know, trying to cash in, you know, go for the fences. That's not going to be, that's not going to be it this time around. It's not going to be it, but it's a good thing because now more and more teams are starting to see what they need to do to truly build a team up, to truly build a team up. And with limited cap space that most of these teams have, they're going to have to draft anyway. And you're going to have to have assets along the way to make key moves in trades. I ain't talking about, you know, making a trade every every year or every, <laughs> or every month. I'm talking about, you know, make a key move here and there when the situation calls for it, when you're ready to take the next step as a team. But like I said, this, this has been... This has been in preparation for the past three years. Whereas when you listen to these experts out here that are supposed to cover the league, fans will get the impression that superstars can always be available because we've been so used to seeing superstars join forces over these past 10 years or so. Well, that's running this course. And the teams I... I've been saying it over and over again. The teams that are drafting astutely, the teams that that manage their cap appropriately, teams that acquire and don't exploit their draft picks to bring a superstar after superstar, those teams that are being ran from a logical frame with this new CBA that's about to hit, those are teams that are going to flourish this decade. You can already see it happening. You can already see it happening. But, like I said, I just want to throw it out there real quick. Um, like I said, I'm very excited about where the NBA is headed because it's not promoting parity. It's promoting competition. And free agency will be used in an appropriate fashion along the way. So, I just want to throw it out there real quick. Again, this is JB for... Behind the bench, and until next time, I will holler later.